Hello everyone and best wishes for a happy new year. Lisa and I are here in England, at least for today. Tomorrow we're going to Marrakesh, but we'll be back in New York next week. But in the meantime, I want to talk to you a little bit about this notion of don't look in the camera. We recently did a training session with a major broadcaster that we're trying to bring into the 21st century. And the room was filled with people who were production assistants and journalists and people from newspapers and people who had never done television. And then, of course, there were a handful of professional, uh, professional television producers and cameramen who insisted that you should not look into the camera. This, to me, is a crazy thing to say because what you want to do when you're making video, you're making anything, is to make eye contact. After all, I am talking to you. Not to you, not to you, not to you, but I'm talking to you. And because I'm talking to you, and this online stuff is a very personal experience, it's imperative that I talk directly to you and not look over there, which is the traditional broadcast way of working. As you can see, if I work like this all the time, it's harder for you to feel like I actually care about what you think about or I'm making eye contact with you. So what you want to do is you want to have the subject look directly into the camera because the important relationship is not between the subject and you, the reporter. The important relationship is between the subject that you're shooting and the audience who's watching. And the best way to do that is to have them look directly at the audience so there's a personal connection and that the audience feel like someone is actually paying attention to them and talking directly to them. Where did this notion of don't look at the camera come from? This is important to understand why it's such an idiotic idea. In the early days of television, which is like, you know, a million years ago and 10 years ago, cameras were these big, heavy, giant things. And that was the only way you could shoot broadcast quality stuff with these enormous cameras. And the enormous cameras had to be carried by a guy who was the cameraman, although his main activity was dragging this thing around on his shoulder. And the reporter stood over here and the cameraman stood over here. And of course, the... The reporter wanted the, per the person being interviewed to have eye contact with them. So they would say, do not look at the camera, which was with that guy over there who's not supposed to be there anyway. And you look at me. And the result was that the audience got to look at people's ears all the time. Now, in the early days of television, when they had a lot of money and they didn't really care, they used to send out two cameras to do interviews. So they'd have one camera that was on the subject and giving you the point of view of the reporter. And the other camera was on the other side of the room shooting back from the subject to look at the reporter. So when you edit it together, you got a conversation. There was some sense to somebody looking over here because at some point there was somebody looking back, looking over here. In that became very expensive to do. And that's where this whole notion of don't cross the line and all that kind of crap you heard from if you went to film school. Eventually it became too expensive. So they got rid of the second camera, but they still had the first camera. And so they would still say, look at the interviewer, which meant the subject was talking like this all the time from the point of view of the viewer. And that made sense for a while if you did what was called cutaways or noddies. And when I was at CBS, we used to do these. We only had one camera crew. We had very one overpaid journalist who went out and did interviews and then the subject. And we'd shoot the subject. Then we would turn the camera around and we would shoot the reporter. We'd do what we call noddies. And the reporter would go like this, like this, like this. And then sometimes we'd do risks. So then the reporter would go, isn't it true that you killed your wife? Isn't it true you killed your wife three or four times? And when you got in the edit, you could cut the thing together so it looked like a conversation. Well, now that's gotten so expensive and so cumbersome, they don't bother with that anymore. But this notion of don't look at the camera, this is a remnant from the 1960s and 1970s that the technology has far surpassed. So when you do interviews, when you talk to people, particularly if you want the subject to connect with the viewer, have them stare right down the lens and stare directly at the person and talk to the person that you're interested in making contact with and having an emotional relationship. And that is the viewer. Forget about this. This makes no sense. Do you feel like I'm connecting with you? This makes no sense whatsoever. So don't do it. Okay? That's it for today. I'll talk to you from Morocco. Bye.